Hello, Elven up players. Hello, Elven up players. Yeah. It's again us. Yeah, again. Zika <laughs> and Timon, the Elvena team. And our today's topic is the, the new halflings. guest race, the halflings. Yeah. So, what is it about? Maybe a short uh, a, a short introduction to the to the quest line. Thank you. Yeah. Like uh, you know, in the last guest race, the sorcerers came and built up this big university. And in the end, when you have like um, trained enough uh, graduates, they decide to leave your town again. But they will uh, like teach you one last special trick. Uh, and this is how you resurrect the halflings. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I mean, what necromancers can do. No? With this beautiful elven necromancer. Yeah, yes, and... he's great. And um, yeah, halflings. For once, uh, we decided that this time this will be a race that is a bit more grateful than the former ones, which were all like very proud and um, even though they were distinct, they it's it was like they are the teachers and you are the, the pupils listening to them and you learn new stuff from them. But this time we, we said we should create a bit of a different feeling where they are really grateful and they also look uh, up to you what uh, they can learn uh, from you. So there's more of a cultural exchange uh, than just uh, learning stuff from the new race. Um, that will have some influence on the look of your buildings in the town. And of course, it will also um, yeah, add some new features to the game. For instance, we will have at the beginning already the upgrade of your trader. You know, this ages old building that never evolved into anything. Uh, and now it starts producing seeds and for free. You just can collect this new resource and it can be used for all kinds of stuff in the settlement of the halflings, but also in the tech tree, uh, be used for, to unlock technologies and also in the future to construct new culture buildings. Uh, so this is the first gift, uh, the first present, sorry. Uh, that you get from the, the halflings, but uh, mm -hmm. then when they build the settlement, they also have some new twists. Mm -hmm. As uh, I don't know who watched already the Inno TV uh, episode where we also described some stuff, but I guess we will also um, tell something in here. And um, it, there is a special um, functionality in the fields where you actually, um, as always, have some upgrades, but this time. Um, you have four resources that um, that uh, appear one each upgrade. So uh, in the first level, you have just grain, and the fields look like uh, grain fields. And the second level, when you upgrade this, I think it's the carrots, right? Yeah, yeah. And the carrots, and then it's pumpkins, and then it's apples. And it always uh, changes its appearance to look like a field for that. And um, there you uh, don't upgrade um, just to have the maximum amount of this, but you upgrade those to have different resources. Yeah, usually um, you upgrade a production building yeah. uh, to have more output at the same time, like from 100 per hour to 150 per hour or something. And this time those fields work very different. So what you are constructing in this settlement is a big farm surrounded so that you have like smaller houses we call farms as well <laughs> and they are surrounded by fields so and the farms work like you are used to it no? so you, you upgrade the farms and their productions increase but the fields if you upgrade them they change what is produced on the field Did I say farms for the fields? For the, for, it, it's it's okay <laughs> uh you will you will learn how it works uh, when you get there um so there's a new twist where you do not just try to upgrade everything to the last level to have the best output. Uh, this time you have to think about which field will be upgraded and which field should I keep on a certain level so it continues to produce stuff. Um, yeah, so if you have questions about this before I tell everything up front, <laughs> maybe you should send us some questions yeah, yeah. and we can answer them. Would also be cool to hear if some of you already uh, built some um, halfling stuff in the, I think it's on the beta a beta for beta yeah. servers uh, yeah. where it's already online. Mm. Actually, it is now online internationally oh, since really? two days. <gasps> mm. uh, but yeah, you know, how I far can you get in <laughs> two days? Um, but on the beta server, it's already out yeah. for a few weeks. So some beta players maybe have advanced quite far already. 
let's see yeah. what their questions are about yeah. it. And the good thing with uh, the fields being um, relevant in each different level is that it looks more diverse. Diverse, yes, exactly. Mm. Diverse, and it is really it's so peaceful and it feels so like home and actually um when we were first um developing those halflings and i got the first looks uh, from the concept artists i was like wow i i really want to live in one of those houses because they're so tiny and cute and they have animals every not everywhere but in several buildings and yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, if you played through uh, lots of our chapters and guest races already, there's this tendency that you have the same amount of buildings very often in your town. So you have like, you already have to have many residences, of course, and workshops, but also in the settlements, you have mostly two or maybe three different kinds of buildings and you have to build them five to ten times. And they then many parts look the same then. But this time, with every field having different purpose on, every, on different levels, the look is way more varied. And that's really, really nice. It looks really cool. I actually have, uh, oh, uh, maybe we should mention that. We, uh, for the first time, we have someone to filter uh, the questions for us. So <laughs> we don't have to uh, search for them the whole time. That's yeah. Matt. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Matt. He's our unicorn filter. So whenever yeah. our, uh, don't know, team members, smuggle into uh, the chat and post silly questions, yeah. he will detect it and yeah. he will not answer it. And also he forwarded us a, a question from Misha Roos. Hello. Um, she wants to know, um, are halflings only accessible after you've um, finished the other races? Yes, like every new content, like every new uh, chapter we add to the tech tree. To the research menu, sorry. <laughs> tech tree is like the term we use in journaling. Yeah. It's it's it sounds a bit tech in there, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, you have to complete the chapters before this race to enter it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's an ongoing story and um, Yeah. And it's actually how long is it planned? To oh don't say this. Oh, too okay, okay. <laughs> It's I mean, a you can while. spend quite a while in this game to, to get all, through all this content, but yeah. it's also nice. It's, it's a long journey and yeah. we are actually also heading somewhere, I can tell mm -hmm. you. It's not like an endless thing that's never and ever, ever going to end. So you, you are really evolving your, uh, your town, your, your people mm -hmm. over time and it will be thrilling to find out what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, I know, uh, I, I, I can be uh, like an oracle because I have the uh, impression that apart from the topic we have now, that is the halflings, there will appear um, a question in our chat soon that will be uh, about, about a mobile version for Elvenar. As every Q&A session had this question yes. so far, right? But when did we not talk about Mobile? This Fact? time the answer can be different than the other times. Do you want? Yeah, yeah, I think she is referring to us having released a mobile version of Elvna, mm -hmm. actually. Just recently, and for now, only in the UK. So if you are from the United Kingdom, hello people. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can go to the app stores and download it for Android and for yeah, so this for, would, yeah. Yeah, this would answer the question for Nelson Montoya, yes, yeah. um, who asked, uh, why is there no app for Apple? No, it's also for There Apple. actually is an app for Apple, yeah. but you have to live in the UK yeah, to get now. it. But yeah, exactly, for now. So what we are doing is we try to uh, like uh, make your account, as you play on the browser, completely available on the mobile version, so you will not be, you, you do not have to start from new when you download this app. Uh, you can just continue using your city, but now everywhere where you want to have yeah. it. And this takes time to add all the features that are in the browser game to the mobile version. So we are now at a state where we think it's cool uh, to play with this app. So we re release it on UK and we are further adding more and more features that are already in the browser game to this app. And when we feel it feels a bit more complete, we will of course expand it and make it available all around the globe. Yeah, exactly. 
So um, yeah, yeah, I guess that answers also uh, Judith Wu's uh, question that uh, one, uh, who wanted to know if uh, there is one for Germany. Not yet, but yes, we will, will release it for every country. Exactly. But now we we look how how the feedback is from our players yeah. in the UK. Yeah, and if you have any further questions and if you want to more, know more about this one, uh, the, the app, uh, you can always go into the forums, ask your questions, and also um, if you have any feedback about the app, uh, especially, well, I'm very interested in that, if uh, there is something in your... Oh, I, I'm not allowed to say user flow because that's too specialized. Um, uh, and how to the Apple uh, Apple handle? How to handled. improve your player experience? Yeah. It if, still sounds if like. If you encounter yeah. something that feels odd or where you're not sure what to do that could be done better, please yes. just tell us in the forums because right now we are we are still developing it. There are, are a lot of core features in there, but still in development, so we can improve on that. And yeah. especially if it's uh, about the user interface, uh, I'm very, very happy um, for the um, for the things that the community managers forward to us of, yeah. on how we can improve that. So, yeah. But it's already really an exciting product. I, I yeah. had the, yeah. the honor to be able to play it just in the recent weeks when I yeah. was on vacation. Uh, usually when I'm on vacation, I, I will not play Elven. I'm uh, when I'm yeah. somewhere, I don't know and have no PC accessible. No? But this time I downloaded the, the app, the newest version we had back then, mm -hmm. and then I could play my account that I have on the beta. Um, and I like I entered the new guest race halflings <laughs> from the mobile version first. It's really nice. So oh. you can do all all the core stuff already. You can mm -hmm. up build and upgrade yeah. the buildings, and you can, of course, um, unlock technologies yeah. and go to the world map and uh, even uh, negotiate and have Auto, auto fight, fights, yeah, auto yeah. fights, yeah. Manual fight is something more tricky. Yeah. Um, so it mostly works um, already. So um, and since it's uh, just an addition to your browser experience, as someone who is already playing on browser, you can just use it for everything that already works. And what does not yet work on mobile, you can still do in the browser. It's really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're looking for more questions from exactly. your side about the halflings oh, and wait, wait. maybe maybe a bit about the mobile version. We cannot say too much about mobile besides what um, we already said. I, I also we have some questions prepared from the community managers uh, which they got in the forum. Um, there is one um, that you might want to uh, answer. This is: uh, Will there ever be any way to gain diamonds in game? Of course, there has to be a diamond question in every Facebook live Q&A <laughs> we do. Uh, but as with the mobile app, it's also a question we always have. Always have. Uh, I can answer this time a bit differently. Yes, we are looking into possibilities, how and when and and how much players can get diamonds by playing the game. But we are very cautious with this for obvious reasons. Uh, but now, in the Halflings chapter, we implemented a quest where uh, which reward is diamonds. So, if you play all through the quest lines of the Halflings, you can win some some diamonds. So we we test how this works out for us and for the players. Of course, I guess you will like it. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> we have to we have some more some some other questions about uh, this approach as well that need to be answered, and then we we see how it uh, evolves. Mm. So, but until now, it's uh, you cannot earn diamonds in the game, and this is only like one a test for us. We implemented it now for one quest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah currently there are not that many requests. Um, uh, I can just, uh, um, uh, Mitty Itim, um, yes, there is a mobile version for Android, but just available for the UK. And otherwise, I think I can start questioning you, huh? Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> see, now <laughs> she's doing your job. Are you already on weekend? Don't know, vacation, went home, too lazy? <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe I never answer your questions properly, so you gave up. I don't know. I, I, I try. I do. I really yeah. Ah, uh, I see some fun comments from our dear colleagues. Do you see it as well? Oh, mm -hmm. Our yeah. unicorn filter does not work properly. We still yeah. have colleagues sneaking in. Yeah. 
Um, so I um, I know that you uh, did the story for the um, halflings, and as you mentioned, oh, is there a question? Yeah, it's actually a question. Oh, yes. Isn't Thank this you. wonderful? Yeah. So um, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. popping up from I uh, it's hard. No, it's Tina. Oh. Tina Mosseri. Now there come oh, the okay. questions. Wow, we are flooded with them. <laughs> so Tina asks us, can you explain the new divine seeds? Please do that because you can so, do it better. <laughs> at the beginning of the Halflings chapter, you unlock an upgrade for the trader. So it will upgrade to level two. From that moment on, it will automatically generate divine seeds for you for free. You just have to collect it like you collect coins. And there are some nice twists about it. So it will produce more seeds the more provinces you have completed. And uh, it also depends on your main hole level. It's actually a relatively simple calculation. It just multiplies your main hole level with the amount of completed provinces. And that's the seeds it produces a day. But there's another twist. You get additional seeds every time you collect. So let's say it says, hey, you can now collect 1,000 seeds. And then you click on it and suddenly you get 1,500 seeds. So these 500 seeds. Is this depending on the ancient wonder? Exactly. So every time you collect seeds, your ancient wonders pay off, <laughs> because the more ancient wonders you have, and the more they are leveled up, the higher the, this pickup bonus, as we call it, will be. So so that way you uh, collect divine seeds, and from that from then on they work similar to mana. So you can store them unlimitedly, but a small amount decays overnight every night. And you use them for unlocking new technologies and for constructing certain buildings in the halfling settlement and for cultural buildings. Still, um, some uh, stuff related to the app. Uh, of I, course, we, the app we, is the hot topic. Yeah. Now, right? um, so, uh, all that you know, currently it's just available for the UK, but it will be available to you all. We just Still in a, in a testing uh, phase. UK is our guinea pig. Sorry. No, <laughs> don't don't. Call no, 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 no. We we try to <laughs> give, uh, de deliver the best work we can give. It's just it's just limited. I mean, the the <laughs> thing is, the stuff that is in the app works almost perfectly. Yeah. So we might have some bugs that will be updated, and uh, then it's fine. Yeah. But we, we what is in the app works. Absolutely. And it's, it's it's not a test lab uh, no. with with uh, our British people, um, but the app is not complete yet. And our initial goal was to have an app that can, if you like, replace the browser version for some people who only want to play on the app. And that is not achieved yet. That is why we choose to have this app with limited um, feature set only available in the UK to see how far we are already, are people satisfied with the content already? And maybe we can release it earlier on international if, if the response is like, hey, we, we can wait for the other features a bit. It's fine, just give us the app right now. Yeah. It can also be an outcome. But for now, we have our plans and we are uh, just a bit cautious how to proceed. Yeah, absolutely. Because we want to, to satisfy uh, yeah. the users with this. Yeah. Oh man, satisfy the user. Sorry, I need we can <laughs> <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> so so to, to help you out, Charlene um, um yeah. Charlene McLean has a question. Any chance of expansion of magic spells? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are actually I don't know how much I can say about that, but we are looking into the spells and into ways how to expand it. We know um that there is some improvement potential for the spells. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we are trying to find ways how to make it more attractive and how to introduce maybe other kinds of spells. Yeah. I think I can talk about this quite soonish, yeah. but not yet today. Not yet today, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, some things are coming about spells. Yeah. We have another person that uh, asked some questions. It's uh, Jimmy Lumper. Hey. Hey, Jimmy. He also says, hey. Uh, why do we have to put Nabil Help Wishes instead of a city name so we practically can't name our cities? Wouldn't it be nicer with a proper feature to let you show your wishes? So, about that, maybe maybe I can ask for that because um, my um, 
my um, responsibility somehow. Um, yes, we see that it's unfortunate right now too. We are actually currently looking into this matter because also neighborly help will be a, a topic for the mobile app and therefore we uh, are curling, uh, currently iterating on several other solutions which I can't go into detail about because they're still in progress but we are definitely looking into this, uh, this, um, this issue and it's my concern as well and I'm pretty sure we can improve on that and yeah. well hopefully in the future. Yeah, uh, but to, to answer this uh, question from another perspective, yes, we also hate it. <laughs> because we also hate it that, that most people are, uh, people are forced to, to rename their city mm -hmm. into advices or whatever. And uh, yeah. it's unfortunate and yeah. we know about it and we also know it has been that way for quite a long time. We apologize. Yeah. But yeah, we, do, we want to improve that, definitely. Um. Rita Woodland uh, wrote, um, hey you, uh, hey. how about building an airport to give us the opportunity to trade with really far away from our, uh, right mm -hmm. away from our map to trade with dead people? You would, you never, would never meet with, or with, otherwise. with people all around the, yeah, the, yeah. the server, the, the game world. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I had a similar question uh, last time. Um, the, the, the core problem here is, is not that you want to trade with a million people at the same time. The problem is that there are not many people trading and if you are like there are 200 people around you but only 10 of them use, use the trade options and that's the problem and it will not be solved if we expand your reach. If, we, um, if, if you use the trader sometimes you will notice whenever you put in an offer then it's gone very fast because the demand is so high. So if we expand your reach to 2,000 people, your offers will be gone even faster. And that is true for everyone. So you will not see more offers. The problem is not the lack of players and you need more players. The problem is the lack of offers per player. And we need to find ways how more players use this trader and uh, how players use the trader more frequently. And that would solve your problem. And then you would not have the need for an airport. <laughs> but I can tell you, um, it, the airport would not solve the problem because mm. the problem is the players you would take the offers from, you would take offers that other players near those players would have accepted otherwise. So you're taking just stuff from other players that are mm. then without offers. So it's not solving the problem. So people yeah. use the trader. I say, I think I should say this every Q&A uh, live session now, use the trader. And if you use the trader, and if you insert offers and not only accept ones, you have never have to pay this trading fee. Trading fee, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you hate the trader trading fee as much as I did, even though I invented it, mm. <laughs> uh, then just make offers, make offers and it will be, it will work fine for everyone. Another question from Gerhard Trost. Um, <laughs> hey. He asked, uh, hey Timon and Rike, when is the in-game profile coming? I guess you are referring to referring what? to the mobile app. In-game profile. I'm not, not I'm not entirely sure which in-game profile you're meaning. If it's regarding the mobile version. Or some Soon. just a just a screen where you can add more information about you or what do you want? That might be because Maybe you we, can have a follow up question that, yeah, uh, that would be clarifies. Cool. Um, um, but yeah. we have uh, several other questions in there. Um, oh, um, <laughs> uh, Lynn Littlewood asked, uh, will we ever be able to transfer goods from one world to another? Mm -mm. No, <laughs> no. It's technically not, not possible. Yeah. And it can also cause like game design problems, actually. Yeah. And um, I'm sorry. Uh, Rogje Jelenic uh, proposes that how about introducing a tutorial on manual manual fighting? That would actually be nice to have some more help how how the manual fight works, right? Yeah. Um, it's difficult no? with our technical uh, limitations. Um, 
it's uh, like we can maybe add a video or something like this, but that's not what you mean, right? It's more uh, giving some more insights about strategies and stuff. And there is some strategy involved and uh, also tactics during the battle that could be helpful to know. I mean, we have this battle help screen. Maybe you can check this out, but it's a bit, uh, it's, it's like it's only about the core stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe it's a nice idea, but it's also a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And we always have to consider that the majority of our players are not using a manual battle. No. A big chunk of players is using the manual battle, but even more players are using quite... Yeah. Like, there are so many features we could work on that more people wouldn't profit from. That's the calculation we always have to have. We right. have some very nice greetings from France. From, nice. Um, Fab Nafilian. Well, hello from France. I'm delighted to see you and to hear you. It's, uh, it is one of my favorite games and I hope that one day there will be storage space to better manage the layout build of buildings. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi, it's how how can we say game. no if it's so so nice? And yeah, <laughs> but I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> yeah, storage for buildings. It will always be a challenge of the game to sort out what you don't need anymore and what you still want to keep. Space in the city will always be limited, and it's we will not go too much into a direction where it becomes easy to exchange just buildings like you you need it. But it's also, we, we see this challenge and we don't want to uh, get uh, this challenge to become too high. Um, so uh, we are certainly looking into how we can avoid that people have like, I don't know, they win 20 buildings in events and then they cannot build it. It's, uh, it's not a cool situation to be in, right? So we try to find a middle ground here. But a very easy solution, like everything can be just packed into a storage and later uh, put back on the map that is not coming. Yeah. Um, uh, Barbara Lynn Ridgeway Germo um, asks, why can't we sell our excesses when a chapter is done? Um, for example, the arcs and shrooms when no, no longer needed. Seems like a waste to just have them manage. Yeah, I mean, most uh, goods are quite, or most resources are limited in, in storage and you can like, um, foresee how many more you need. Mm -hmm. um, also, for some races, for the first guest races, we used uh, these resources that uh, uh, for constructing the new streets. So you could use up most of them just by building the streets. Um, with the newer races, we went away from that uh, a bit and said now we use mana to build streets. That's cool because you can at any time um, decide to build new streets and you don't need the settlement then uh, for it. Um, yeah, I think the challenge here is more to be aware how many goods you still need and focus only on what you need. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I have this also like now in the last chapters, um, I also have to ha had to think about how much of my settlement should today produce stuff mm -hmm. because it costs mana and maybe I need my mana for other stuff. Yeah. And then some days I just um, let them pause. And, and, and stored more mana instead. And this kind of strategic thinking, how much resource you need to produce when, is part of the game. So that is why we said, okay, also for the end, we do not throw it away. You can see that the resources are still there if you, for whatever reason, rebuild the portal. So if in the future we decide to do something with the resources, they will still be there. But uh, besides that, yeah. uh, just look out that you don't produce too much. No. Um, Martin Meyer has a question. Um, he says, hey guys. Hey guys. Hey back. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any plans to improve interaction between players besides only trading and neighborly help? Which is, um, yes, we are looking into this topic. I can't tell anything more concrete because Things are in evaluation and development. Probably you, there may appear things. But yes, of course, we are, um, we are also reviewing if uh, the interaction between players is enough and if there's something cool we can do to improve that or to make more of this because this is a social game. And 
it's important to us and yeah. of course it's important to you so we try to focus on things like that um, yeah so we can I can definitely add to that that uh, this is becoming more and more a focus of us to, to yeah. look into interactions of players or, yeah. or into multiplayer stuff into cooperative stuff yeah. mostly yeah and um, there is something on the horizon which as you said we cannot talk about yet but this is becoming a more and more important part of yeah. Elvina so there will be more cooperation and multiplayer possibilities in the future yeah, yeah. and we can promise that much as Timon said most of this cooperation uh, um, is cooperation yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah. and um, um, Mark Henderson is I think a bit um, uh, concerned and asked most browsers are removing support for flash when will you be moving to HEML HTML which is we are aware of that. We are um, evaluating uh, solutions. We can't tell dates, but we are aware of it, and there is no way we will allow browser. It will not version. become. Uh, yeah. It, it's currently our problem, and it will yeah. not become your problem. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the best answer we can give. It. We will, we will solve sure. this in time. Yeah. We are aware of it for quite some time, of course. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, we will we will solve this issue in time. Yeah. Uh, and other questions. Um, uh, do you want to pick another question? Because I can't decide. Timothy Kalaha asks, Hi Timothy, would it be possible to lower construction times by applying multiple builders to one building? Oh. It's it's nice because ah. this was one of our very very early discussions we had for the project when ah. uh, yeah like before it was playable and stuff like we we knew we 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 would have builders and we would have several of them and then the natural question was can you assign uh, several of them mm -hmm. to one building and we said for simple simplification reasons we said no it's not going to be possible there is a lot of like uh, the, the the user action so what you would have to do might be relatively easy and simple now you just click a button and then you have two builders uh, this construction site but from technical standpoint there are a lot of things to consider and it would have made uh, uh, the game in some areas way more complex mm -hmm. than we would like to have it but that's guess, why we didn't do it i guess it would be cool if we could speed up building times i'm afraid um that we just have <laughs> yes. one to two questions more we can answer and then we have to um finish uh, the q a here um so uh, i like this question yeah then ask it <laughs> <laughs> i can't pronounce his name but it's sinisa gilanovic asks will there be an option to move a city near your guild members mm. and i like this question because i have a question why do you want to do that <laughs> there i designed <laughs> zero uh, um how do you say advantages if you move to your guild members so there is there are no reasons in the game gameplay wise gameplay wise yeah. why you should want to be next to your because we said it is technically very very difficult to achieve something like this now if we would like if we made it possible for every player to choose his neighbors you would not have this it would be impossible to have this map where everyone is is together you would only uh, have like isolated maps where you can only see people that are related to you directly for instance because everyone want to have other neighbors next to him and it would not be possible to fulfill one wish but not the other and stuff so so we designed the game from the ground up that no one would like to uh, um, change their location it's later on we learned of course there is another uh, reason why you want to change the location this is when there are not many players around you and you need yeah. more uh, trading partners yeah. so and then we implemented that player cities are all automatically moved when they are surrounded by empty cities um, so i hope uh, you can live with it that we will not make it possible to move next to a guild uh, member but, but on the other it. side we will make sure that you won't need it yeah, no yeah. feature like look at the tournaments we started with having it uh, neighbor based so it was important to have certain people around you so you could effectively participate in tournaments with your neighbors we changed it to you make it with your uh, guild members and now it doesn't matter who's next to you in that respect 
So I hope that uh, no. it's okay. And also I can relate. I, I would feel the same, but you really don't need it. Um, I, there's another question and someone, <laughs> someone um, discovered something on the Halfling buildings. That will be our, our um, final, last, question. final, final thing. But first of all, there, um, Wolfgang Kott, uh, Kottba, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, uh, asked, is there another quest event coming soon? I think yes. on Vita there is already one. I'm pretty sure it will appear on um, on live servers soon. I'm I'm not sure. Not? No, I'm not sure, but I guess it's next week. Next week, yeah, that might might make me so sense. very soon. Yeah, yes. yeah, and I'm pretty sure you can find some information in the forum soon about that. Um, and the last one, someone, I'm I'm afraid we didn't get um, the, name. the name from our uh, unicorn barrier, but someone discovered a peeing dude on the halfling building. <laughs> a tiny Easter egg. It's, it's unfortunate that you can't uh, show the building, but do you know which of the buildings it was? Um, it's one level of the new mercenary camp, I guess. Oh, oh don't yeah, kill you're me. Right. That it's, it's, a, it's a tavern where you have a yeah. lot of people standing there. And yeah, sometimes... and you only see this peeing dude from behind. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's no, not, not rated in any, any uh, way. <laughs> I will not answer this time, Matt. No. Uh, the, the, the question about why we can't turn our buildings. <laughs> I answer this every time. And okay, if next time this answer, uh, this question is is uh, popping up again and again, then I might answer it again. But for now, this is my private secret. If if, if I if I if I would say we should make a drinking gate a game out of this, I guess oh we God. would be super drunk. So I won't propose that. Can we make a tea drinking game out of this? I prefer, I prefer tea. Yeah, but then we had to disappear. Around some place, but uh, then we are back to the peeing dude on the halfling's building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was a pleasure as always, and um, we are looking forward to the next Q and A. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's cool. We revealed, and you guessed this. We revealed the mobile version. Yeah, it's finally. Really nice. Oh yes. And and we are not stopping. I mean, it's uh, like if we meet next month or maybe in two months again on the next Facebook Q and A, yeah. we will have a couple of other issues we can talk about, which are also very nice. Absolutely, and also. Uh, He's sitting here in the room, but I want to say especially thanks to Matt, who uh, forwarded the questions to us. Yeah. Thank you. That was a great support. Keep because, on filtering. Yeah. Finally, finally, I can say a bit more and just not read questions. <laughs> yeah. And I would say um, have a nice evening and have a nice weekend. Yeah. And shall we do it? The <laughs> well, it's so cool if we discuss it before we do it, right? So, one, two, three. <laughs> you? Sorry, sorry. Now you have to suffer. Okay, keep on playing.